Hello, I am Wendy Godan and I am a bead worker and a writer. I am also a history professor. And I am very pleased that my beadwork will be featured as part of the Critical Mixed Race Studies Conference this year. I feel that the work that is um, included uh, as uh, included in this conference really um, fulfills the theme of the conference, ancestral futurisms, um, embodying multiracialities, past, present, and future. Uh, the beadwork that is included features images of my grandmothers and my great-grandmothers. And I am sewing um, sequins around these images, and I'm also including fabric, uh, particularly West African textiles, as well as ribbon. And the images are meant as a way to venerate my ancestors. Um, they are also a way to represent the many aspects of my family history. We are Louisiana Creoles, um, and so we are descended from um, West African uh, folks who were um, enslaved in the Caribbean and in the uh, Mississippi River Valley. And so we are um, of Afro-Caribbean descent. We are also of Native American descent, particularly those uh, nations of the Deep South. And we are also of European descent. Um, the images that you will see, the, the, the grandmothers and the great-grandmothers of mine, um, you will see images of them as representations of Louisiana Creoles and how we in the present can engage with images of mixed race people or multiracial people of the past. So thank you so much for including my work in this conference and um, I'm very happy that Louisiana Creoles will be represented here. Hi, my name is Aisha Harrison, 
And um, I started making work about my mixed race identity about 20 years ago. Um, of course, I was thinking about it a lot long time before that. Um, and my thinking around it has shifted over the years so much. And I think it's pretty awesome that I have a record of that thought through my artwork. Um, the work I do requires listening to my ancestors and figuring out what they need, what they need to exist in the world, um, what they would need to potentially have some healing around what's happened. Um, my bloodlines carry a lot in them. And so, and a lot of things sort of in conflict. And so I find um, that my people need things to be manifest into this world. I'm really curious about not only my human ancestors, but also um, plant and animal ancestors and what they have to teach us as well as um, ways that we can offer and give back. And um, I'm also interested in how all of that relates to what's happening right now. Um, so the ways the, the past and the present and the future are all interconnected. I just finished a piece called Woman with Graves at Her Back, which was a collaboration between an ancestor and me. Um, this ancestor survived the transatlantic um, crossing and became one of the first in my line to live on this continent. Um, this stolen continent. In the piece, she has a cavity, like an open cavity under her rib cage where moss can grow. And she really wanted to be alive, not just seem alive or feel alive, but she wanted to actually like have a living part of her. She also has uh, circular markings on her back that are reminiscent of scarification and also the ways that people were packed into the boats that came across the Atlantic. Um, they also, I think, are reminiscent of freshly dug graves. Right now I'm working on lots of different things, lots of projects um, I'm excited about. One of them is a series of pieces of uh, women and non-binary and trans folks of color. And I'm actively looking in my community, finding members of my community who are pillars and movers and shakers um, who do community work. Ugh. I'm really curious about public art and making some new monuments that feature our unsung heroic folk. Thank you so much for watching this and for looking at my work.
me llama Asaya. Soy una anarquista Shimanshu. Mi madre se llama Akemi y el nombre de mi abuela es Waka. Ellas son de una isla llamada Tokunoshima. Un día no habrá policía en Tokunoshima ni en ningún otro lugar. Amir la Black Lives Matter. Muchas gracias. Me gustaría saber sus comentarios. Estas son lindas. No son lindas. Hello everyone, I'm Leslie Burns. This is uh, my first time attending the Critical Mixed Race Studies Conference. So I'd like to thank everyone involved and to also thank you for this opportunity to share my work with you. I'm going to uh, let the video of my images roll so that you can simply view, first of all, view and experience the work. I encourage you to trust your own perceptions and observations and your intuition and to listen to your responses to the work. I hope you'll share some of them with me. I'll also be sharing with you um, a video of a recorded slide talk that I recently gave at the University of Pennsylvania, sorry, at the Edinburgh University in Pennsylvania. Um, the video is approximately 12 to 15 minutes long. And I hope you'll check that out. I look forward to meeting many of you. Here we go.
Hello, CMRS conference. My name is Dr. Chinello L. Njaka, and I am an Igbo, which is a ethnic group in Nigeria, um, US American British sociologist and maker artist based in Peckham, London, in the United Kingdom. I am also the founder and director of Peckham Rights, which is which champions everyday human rights for marginalized groups in Peckham, London, and beyond. I have expertise in the sociology of race, racisms, and racialization. My current interests include examining systemic, institutional, and structural racisms, anti-racism advocacy, and race and racism within craft practices and spaces. My current work includes exploring Igbo and Nigerian fiber and textile craft practices, developing frameworks for redressing racism and other forms of systemic discrimination within the craft sector, and examining racial discourses at the state, institutional, and community group levels of society. I've had a deep interest in fiber and textile arts and crafts from a young age. My early exposure and experiences with sewing, knitting, and other needle craft in particular were largely with white European and North American practices and makers. It was only into adulthood around my first trip to Nigeria um, when I began to connect my interest in practice and craft with my desire to connect with Igbo and Nigerian cultures. Also informed by my sociological interests, in my current creative practice, I explore Black and Igbo identity and experience, as well as challenge dominant notions of craft and crafters through a mix of photography and traditional modern and art quilting, as well as through spinning fibers and knitting, garment sewing, and embroidery. My artwork and wider practices are the ways through which I embody multiplicity and pursue social justice in my life, for my family, relatives, and ancestors, and my community and communities. Making is a tactile and tangible nexus through which I connect and converse, explore and interrogate, and ultimately reconfigure and reconcile past, present, and future multiplicities. Through my research informed and creative practices, I look back towards my multiple heritages and connect to my lineages of makers across three continents through learning their traditions and both amplifying and creating anew their diverse stories in the present day. Also in the present, the more public aspects of my creative practice seek to foster community through story, story sharing and skills building, both to encourage the continuation of craft and making, as well as to facilitate makers to connect with all of their ancestral histories and traditions. This hopefully leads to paving the way towards a future where makers continue to thrive and are empowered through carrying on traditions from the past, creating new ones and continuing to pass along our ancestral oral and creative histories to future generations. The excerpts I'm sharing here are part of a larger work in progress in partnership with the Horniman Museum and Gardens located in Southeast London, United Kingdom. This project began last year as part of the Community Action Research Project. I researched the Horniman collections to develop a project focusing on Igbo and Nigerian craft practices, specifically looking at the ways that Igbo craft is both present and absent from the collections and wider archival, curatorial, and academic sources. Starting with my fascination with the traditional Igbo hat called Akuogu, I examined the Horniman collection for clues to its story from plant to garment. As I found different pieces of the story, I used traditional and art quilt techniques to begin to craft a visual narrative of Aku Ogu, using vibrant colored fabrics and hand spun cotton to create representations of the different steps in the creation of the hat. This journey also led me to revisit and contextualize archival items from my own family history from around the same time period, which was 1948 to 1967. I presented the art for my completed Horniman research called Searching for a Story, Fiber and Textile Arts in Igbo Land in Nigeria at the close of the Community Action Research Project in September of 2021. The full story of Okpu Ogu is yet to be uncovered for me, so future research will include a wider scope for research and quilting, and the complete story will be pieced together and quilted with a mixture of traditional, modern, and art quilting techniques.
My name is Sonia Collettenart and I'm a 15 year old high school sophomore from Phoenix, Arizona. I'm so honored to have been chosen as a featured artist for the 2022 Critical Mixed Race Studies Virtual Conference. I began drawing as a child and then proceeded to experiment with various paint modalities as I grew older. I sketch and paint to soothe myself and to express my thoughts and feelings beyond language. Art speaks to the mind and heart, and it's my hope that my art causes consideration and contemplation to those who see it. While I typically do landscape paintings in both acrylic and watercolor mediums, I was particularly interested in this conference as it's a step out of my comfort zone for a topic area that's very, very close to my heart. As a multiracial high school student, I've become passionate about embracing my identity. With such intention in mind, I recently founded The Color of Us, an online platform that educates about multiracial and multicultural issues, as well as provides a safe space for multiracial and multicultural youth to express themselves through blogs, podcasts, and art. Post high school, I plan to attend college and pursue a career in public policy and eventually law, where I intend to advocate for marginalized communities. For this conference, my art submission entitled Color Vision is intended to encourage people to see race differently, namely beyond labels and categories. I drew upon my own personal experiences as a multiracial and multicultural youth to create an image that shows both the simplicity and complexity that is equally beautiful. The simple line of shape without gender or phenotypic features draws attention instead to the color, not merely one or two, but a complexity of many colors. This represents the multiracial identity that sees race as a component of that identity. Using hard exterior shape lines combined with a softer interior color lines also symbolizes the past, present, and future of the multiracial identity. The image is not gender specific and encompasses a diversity of color with warm undertones indicating life. For so long, society has taught us to be colorblind and to intentionally erase our race as a part of our identity. Yet, seeing race and multiraciality specifically is an important component to being authentically seen and accepted by the larger society. So often, multiracial individuals are categorized as being of one race only based on skin tone or phenotypic appearances. And consideration of being more than one race is frequently ignored or dismissed in the process of categorization and labeling. With this process of racial categorization being less than clear, then the perception becomes of being ethnically ambiguous. Yet for multiracial individuals, we know our own beauty, our unique colors, and the tapestry of where we come from. Our identity is not ambiguous or limited, and as we move into the future, may our eyes see each other clearly and celebrate the rich beauty of our own colors. Thank you.